Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host, Mark Lawrence of Statewide News Service, jbiztechvalley.com. And now, as you can see, columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, I'm having really a lot of fun doing all of those things, and uh, it's just, you know, writing about how the Jewish community, how the uh, government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. And one of the issues in terms of government relating to the Jewish community is cemeteries. And we're gonna, we have two very special guests with us today from the New York State Association of Cemeteries, Dave Fleming and uh, Dan Hallenbeck. So welcome to The Jewish View. Thank you for having us. And Thank you. we have a somber topic, but I'm sure we'll still uh, live in it up. Live in it up <laughs> we'll topic. do our best. Okay. Uh, so Dave, I just want to ask you, you know, t tell us about your organization. Tell us about what goes on in, you know, what, what you have to do and what your membership is. And, you know. Well, actually, I'll, I'll let Dan tell you, if you don't mind, a yeah. little bit about the organization itself. Dan acts as the executive director right. of the association, and I do the government relations work as well as consulting for the association. Okay. Yeah, um, it, our organization is made up of uh, all different types of cemeteries. We're a non-for-profit association. Uh, we make up non-for-profit cemeteries, religious cemeteries, veteran cemeteries, and some standalone crematories that were grandfathered in under the law, which David will speak about. Uh, our real goal and mission is to serve the communities that these cemeteries are within, uh, provide assistance in any way possible. Our membership is over 600 members. Uh, some of those consist of cemeteries and others are businesses that act within the industry that support them. Are they funeral directors or that's not under your auspices? No. It's just the cemeteries themselves, not yes, the funeral correct. directors. All right. There's 600 cemeteries in New York State? Uh, there's much more than that. We have 600 members. Uh, there's a New York State <coughs> Division of Cemeteries, which is the regulatory authority for all non-for-profit cemeteries. And they are the regulatory authority for all. There are profit cemeteries? No, actually, under New York law, all cemeteries are required to be not for profit. Right. So, so they're the currently station? just under 1,800 regulated cemeteries in the state of New York. There are almost 6,000 cemeteries in total, and those would include religious as well as private and family cemeteries. So, why the distinction to always say non profit cemeteries? Well, Is that actually. Redundant or? Well, no, I, I guess it's not. It, we, we try to make it, when we say nonprofit cemeteries, we're really talking about the regulated nonprofit cemeteries. All cemeteries in New York are nonprofit. But well, you said private cemeteries. It's interesting. I was taking my uh, kids on a trip, and we saw, and I actually, I mean, it's not in New York State, but I saw something in Maine also. You know, maybe you tell me more. I, 100 years ago, maybe it's 150 years ago, you know, a person had 10 acres, 20 acres. And they just put a little cemetery plot, you know, almost as big as a normal room with a little fence well, around it. We see it. that on the north way, yeah, around exit saying. five. Yeah, you know, I they got that on little the trip. So, is that would be considered cemetery to you? Or, I mean, well, that would be under the six thousand cemeteries that are in, in New even York. A yes. family even a little, even the little family 10, plots, 15, yeah. absolutely. Could you tell us what this uh, fund is for destroyed monuments uh, that the Bureau of Cemeteries has, and you know how to access it and you know, how, how to, what do you have to do to uh, be eligible for the money that's in there? And maybe you know how much it's in there, I don't know. Well, it's, that's, that's a good point. There actually, we wish there was all of, all of the money that should be in it, but like any other uh, fund that's controlled by the state of New York, it gets swept on an annual basis. So uh, there should be about nine to $12 million in the fund. Uh, right now they uh, fund it at upwards of uh, nearly a million dollars a year. Uh, 900,000 this year, 900,000 plus. So 10% of what it, of what it should What be. was contributed and is now gone. That's been absorbed into the general fund for decades. Wow. Yes. That's upsetting, I presume. It's very upsetting. We actually had a, had a bill in that would require that the money be protected and uh, was unfortunately vetoed in a previous administration. Now, one of your, uh, one of your advocates in the Senate is Mike Rasenhofer. Seems like all cemetery bills go through Mike Rasenhofer. <laughs> why is he so special and why is he taking such a, uh, you know, su such a care for, you know, your bills? I mean, you know. Well, he's been a tremendous advocate for yeah. the association. That's, that's clear, um, really for all cemeteries, but he's chairman of the Corporations Committee and under the, under the way the Senate is set up and the Assembly as well, 
all bills relating to cemeteries have to go through the corporations committee. So he's the chair of the committee that principally hears those bills. But there are other members. I mean, there are, and there are other members who who do sponsor bills. But um, no, I even spoke to him about. It. He seems to take pride. In, he and really he has, does. And he is Jewish. Also, he, so <laughs> he's he's a tremendous advocate of cemeteries of all types, and uh, he respects what our folks do and and you know who they are in the community. Obviously, these are as nonprofits. They're made up of the board members all right. through the community, so whether they be, you know, teachers or, you know, your next door neighbor. Do you have an advocate as staunch as uh, Senator Rasenhofer on the assembly side? Do you, is there a go-to yes. person on the assembly side yes. that's M Mr. or Ms. Uh, cemeteries or? Assemblyman uh, Brennan's been a real advocate for cemetery legislation. He well. must have some of the larger cemeteries in his district, or no? Is he he does, yeah. actually. He lives across Washington's the street from Greenwood Cemetery. Greenwood, I guess okay. his district office is across the street from Greenwood. So he's got great open space right in his front yard. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but they also have a um, Washington Cemetery is on McDonald Avenue, and it's separated by the L. Yes. That goes. Yeah. On the, uh, over McDonald Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, that is that primarily a Jewish cemetery, Washington Cemetery, or um, that I couldn't answer. Because I have relatives buried there, but we can't find them. We don't mm -hmm. know where they are, oh, okay. and they have really bad record keeping there. Well, if you know who they are, we'd be happy to try to work something out to help you out. You no, know, Mark. Once you talk about Jewish cemeteries, I just wanted to we were on the Jewish view that um, you know we were like a little bit joking that cemeteries is obviously a morbid. Uh, you know, subject or business, but in Judaism it's called Hevra Kadisha, which means it's the holy society. So it's not like, oh, you know, like cemetery people, who dead bodies, I get rid of them, but it's actually a very holy, you know, it was known to be an honor in the Jewish community part of the burial society because obviously you should take care of somebody when they're alive, that goes without question, but even when they passed away, they're not just a heap of muscle and bones and just get rid of them, they're, they're treated with the highest level of respect. So, I mean, on one hand, the Jewish, you know, bearing someone is very special, but, you know, just talking to funeral directors, of course, you know, part of being a rabbi is obviously is, you know, burials also, cemetery work, and they say more and more people are just getting cremated. Yeah, well, know? I was going to ask you yeah. about no, the crematories, because it seems like that's, you're not in the Jewish religion. I guess you're not supposed to be cremated, but yet they have crematory, Jewish crematories. Uh, do you have any comment, any thought about what's going on in that in the industry regarding? Well, I would say that you know generally, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but I think cremation rates of statewide are 60 percent. They're 60. You know, have, are in places, 60% of all deaths are really you know, that resulted. high. I didn't even know in it's certain that parts high. of the state, particularly in western New York, there are pockets within the state. Um, so, you know, with a cremation rate that high, there's certainly a change in the perception of, um, you know, how funerals are conducted and how services are conducted. And we're certainly seeing that in how people memorialize their loved ones who are no longer with them. And unfortunately, I think. In some instances, we have folks who take a very disposable view of people, and you know, cremation is an easy route. For others, it's a choice and involves memorialization, and certainly in a lot of cemeteries that we represent, they have all sorts of options for memorialization and respect of their departed. Well, one way I understand is just also it's expense. So it goes the other way. I mean, you know, listen, if something costs, it costs. You know, I mean, that's life. You know, if you have to, you have to. But, you know, the cemetery fees, you know, again, I'm a rabbi, so I deal with all kinds of people, and some people just don't have funds. And really, funerals cost a lot of money nowadays. Mm -hmm. They don't you know, have so to, I, though. I don't, so they don't have to. They don't have to. Why? And, well, because you can, you can uh, choose uh, more affordable alternatives for memorialization. You don't have to get the same casket that President... Uh, Reagan was buried in. You no, don't have but, to. but we have a very in, pine and, box with sure. holes on the bottom. We have a very simple Absolutely. type of uh, a casket in the Jewish religion. So how much cheaper can you Well, but get? I think <laughs> from, from the perspective of the Jewish faith, there's plenty of affordable options you know, for choices in, in where you decide to go for the funeral part itself, where the funeral director is involved. And the cemeteries many times are you know, associated with the synagogue, so therefore you have a specific cost, and that cost really relates directly uh, in most instances to the care and upkeep of the cemetery. So you have to be able to 
uh, have enough money put aside to continue the operation. Well, the I don't think anyone would be refused burial in a synagogue a cemetery. I also, but there was a gentleman in, in my synagogue who did say you have to pay to lay. <laughs> and that was his, he was the cemetery's chairman, that was his phrase. And, uh, but anyhow. It uh, money to die. Yeah, you know, it does. It's about $10,000, right? Yeah. Well, it depends. If we're simple? It depends. Well, it, the prices are all over. All well, over what's the, the least expensive you've heard of? <laughs> I can tell you, I actually operate three small rural cemeteries in, in uh, Rensselaer County. Oh. And uh, they're not obviously religious cemeteries. They're not associated with the temple or anything, but they are municipal cemeteries. And our, our graves go for $600. That's for the so, grave, but the then grave. you got the casket cost and you have sure. other costs. Those so. are costs outside the realm of the cemetery, though. So, But that's why I'm saying as an association director, let's say. Mm -hmm. I mean, you must be totaling these things up and you must get a feel. I mean, this is your field, so you must get a feel for what it costs for someone to get buried. Well, to go mm -hmm. back on uh, your comment about cremation, it, it is a concern to many cemeteries and a lot of our outreach and calls that we receive are cemeteries that are looking for ideas to decrease the cost of uh, burials to help offset some of the people that are going to cremation and not memorializing. Uh, so some of the ideas that cemeteries have thought of are things like walking trails within their cemeteries. Uh, other cemeteries have thought of things like a small fee to allow you to walk your dog through their cemetery. Um, they've had community fundraisers that help offset some of the costs to maintain the cemetery, which in, as a result can decrease the cost for burials. On the other side of casket costs and things that are related with the funeral director, that's sort of out of our control per se, is we, us controlling their prices. I'm not saying you much. control it, I'm just saying you, you understand better than someone who's never oh, been absolutely. through a funeral absolutely. how much, the, I mean, we can get the head of the Funeral Directors Association on also, but I'm just saying that isn't, you know, you do get a feel for how much uh, a casket and that part of it, even though it's out of your realm, how much that part of it could cost. You know, and that's what I I'm think, asking. Yeah, well, I, again, getting back to what I was saying earlier, there is such a difference depending on what part of the state you're in and what okay. even what part of the capital region you are in. Where I live in Rensselaer County is going to be a lot cheaper than if you come into Albany County. The prices that you're paying a funeral director, um, you know, are a cost. So it, it's a market price. Right. So you're, you're paying that. Price. So is there a, a law that says you have to be buried in a casket? No, you don't even have to be embalmed in New York. So you could just. You can skip dig, a lot of this stuff. You Absolutely. could just dig a hole, put the person in, cover it over. Well, and you it. couldn't personally, but a funeral director <laughs> could have that arranged for you. In New York, you're required to have a funeral director. But those, like we said, those family oh. plots, a person has a hundred acres. They couldn't make their own little cemetery. They can make their own they cemetery. Really? They really? absolutely can. Like although I, I've, uh, I caution against it frequently when I speak at uh, uh, events where folks are learning more about cemetery law and, and uh, you know how to manage a cemetery because I think. Part of what our membership does and you know, what a synagogue cemetery would do is about memorialization and it's about perpetual memorialization. And without proper funding, you see those places on the sides of the North Way that become abandoned and run down and no one's maintaining them. We're required to have trust funds and required to maintain why a cemetery in New York is different than other states is that we are a perpetual not-for-profit. We have to be around forever. And there's a requirement that we that we have to. You know, that's provide interesting funding. because this is very important because I just had a case like that. But I mean, Mark and I both know there's a cemetery around in Bethlehem where I live, and it's for 100 years old and it is totally run down. And then someone, at what I said was personally, they were scared because the synagogue temple was older population. They said, you know, I want perpetual. You know, I'm I'm marrying bearing my mother. You know, I don't, I hate to think in 20, 30 years when all the members, listen, they were all, they're all senior citizens and there's no one to take care of it, it's going to be run down. Oh no, we have a perpetual <coughs> fund with the Jewish well, Federation. The, the, this is Congregation Beth Emmet, mm -hmm. and they have a yeah. cemetery now, an active cemetery in Loudonville. Right. Yeah. And this was their, uh, like Rabbi Simon was saying, for like 100 years, but it hasn't been used in 50 years. And I already called them. They said they know that there's a problem 
in the cemetery in terms of water and seepage into the graves and uh, uh, culvert. So is there something that maybe they could apply to the division of cemeteries? Or is there something, some way that, this, that the synagogue could you know, get some money or some help in terms of a backhoe or something to try to make this, uh, make this right? That's what I'm thinking. Well, you know, there are, there's a municipal assistance law that was passed just a few years ago that allows cemeteries to go to municipalities and seek their help. And municipalities can provide in-kind goods or services to assist cemeteries. Issues like drainage and so forth are something that would be of an interest to a municipality to be able to help. It's an easy fix. They don't have to write you a check to do it. They can actually provide the goods and services. And so we encourage folks to do that because it's an easy thing. In this the age of a tax cap where municipalities don't have a lot of money to be able to provide financial assistance, they can provide the assistance that they already have available. If they have a debt little downtime with their highway crew, they might be able to do something. Mow the lawn, you mean? Absolutely. There are plenty of uh, municipalities that do that now that have decided instead of taking over a cemetery, they're going to help with the mowing of the lawn. They're going to do the books for the cemetery. Now, on Long Island, the cemeteries are not owned by synagogues. They're th th like Wellwood and Montefiore. And, I mean, they're, they're societies sure. that have bought plots within this humongous acreage of land mm -hmm. before Long Island was developed. <laughs> and have you been down to these uh, cemeteries? Yeah, there's some real problems with societies that have aged out. I think that that is a concern because, um, you know, you touched on an interesting point about perpetual care in the societies themselves, in that the societies are separate from the cemetery as a whole. So while the cemetery may be very well maintained, some of these society burial grounds are not because the cemetery doesn't actually own the land. They're not allowed to go on them. Right. So we've now, been looking at legislation that would help um, clean up the administrative nature of those societies. Because I belong to the Knights of Pythias, mm -hmm. and they have a burial for me. If I, and they, I, be, I, have, a fam years. I have a family <laughs> plot, which is Montefiore Cemetery, which mm -hmm. I have a burial there, and I have Beth Abraham Jacob, I could be buried up here. So you're, you're so going to discover. I'm, sure, I'm not sure where I want to be buried, <laughs> but I know I got three good choices. Right. <laughs> so, but that's what people join. That's why people join these fraternal orders because they had uh, because they had burial rights, and they and and people who are unaffiliated with synagogues, and they just wanted a place to be buried. And if you became a life member after 50 years of these societies, and then you passed, you know, Parkside Funeral Home and others that are Jewish funeral homes downstate, they take you and they bury you and, you know, they take care of the whole thing. I mean, so I'm just saying that for the audience. I don't know if you knew about that. Yes. But, yeah. Okay. So you know about the Knights of Pythias. Hmm. You want to become a member? No. <laughs> <laughs> so... So let, let me ask you about, uh, all right, so we covered the Division of Cemeteries and what they do. Do you have anything to add of, the, of what the Division of Cemeteries no, does? No, I think, I think you've covered it okay. well. I think, you know, one of the concerns that we have generally is just, you know, long-term preservation of cemeteries. And, and sometimes we wonder um, that all the tools aren't in the hands of the state that they need to keep, to make sure that these cemeteries are surviving in the long term. All right, and the size of your association we covered mm -hmm. is, what, 600? 600. Yeah, approximately 600. We're growing every day. Every day. And what's your mission statement? Did you memorize it? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I didn't memorize it, but I okay. can tell it to you for sure. Because right. you uh, printed it out? Of course. <laughs> okay. I always come prepared. Okay. Uh, the goals in ISAC are to promote the advancement of practical knowledge in the operation and maintenance of cemeteries to create and maintain high ethical standards and conduct a, of cemetery administration and to secure the advantages to be obtained by mutual corporation. Okay. And we talked about the fund to, for destroyed monuments, right? Vandalism. That, vandalism. For vandalism. Is that, how bad is it? I mean, once you're, we touched upon it. I mean, usually you always hear Halloween, something is wrong, or usually when a Jewish cemetery gets headlines like we were just talking about the Jewish press, oh, here's a swastika, you know, on a tombstone, it's terrible, you know, it gets pressed. But it, I mean, sometimes these crimes are once a year and, you know, they make headlines, or is it prevalent? 
I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, you're at the meetings with me too. I, I think there's not as many I think as there used to be, but um, in many instances the cemeteries do not report the vandalism because they're afraid vandalism will beget more vandalism. Well, that's interesting. And so they just uh, clean it up themselves. They clean it up themselves. Many of them unfortunately don't have the financial resources to do it, but they they do what they can to do that so that it doesn't become a news story. Is there a harsh laws about it? I always think it's almost. It's like a hate crime. Obviously, it's not again. It's property and not people. But you know, there are a number of bills pending that would increase the penalties for uh, acts of vandalism in a cemetery. I, personally, I don't think it's uh, strong enough, and I think that uh, you know we should be going after folks. Should it be long term fi finance? Absolutely. Yeah. Long term, uh, you know, sustainability of their salaries to help the cemetery. Now, I have to tell you, I. Uh, well, in the Jewish religion, if you're a Kohen, you know what a Kohen is? Or it's a priest. high priest, mm -hmm. and they're not allowed to go on the cemeteries, and there's something, a special walkway. What if there's no trees? If there's no overhang mm -hmm. from branches, you can walk through on the side, on yeah. a, on the side and there's... Uh, certain rules and regulations. Because they're holy people, like Mark yeah. over here is a <laughs> so, is a so, so I sent, have to so be. I, so I have relatives buried at the old Montefiore Cemetery where the Lubavitcher Rebbe is buried, and I sent a friend in to uh, get some take pictures of my family's uh, gravestones. Mm -hmm. One of them was sort of tipped over, and the caretaker there just put uh, held, held it up with a stick. And I don't know what to do about it, you know, is there, you know, you said that this fund is only for vandalism, but this isn't vandalism. This is just a stone that wasn't we were set here. right, you know. So well, what happens when you find something like that? The right? actual issue is that um, the cemetery doesn't obviously own the monument. Right. It is owned by the family. So um, the family is primarily responsible. If there's someone available who, is, um, who can have, afford to have the stone fixed, and if not, sometimes your homeowner's insurance, which people don't often know, sometimes your homeowner's insurance actually will cover monuments. Wow. And uh, so, you know, if the... Aside from your own. Yes. Well, if it's a family... Because you wouldn't have if homeowner's it's a family, insurance if it was if your it's own. A family, I just want to see if, if you're it's paying a family attention. Monument. Yeah, we're paying attention. <laughs> uh, if it's a family monument, sometimes homeowners does cover it. And we, uh, we see that at cemetery board meetings, that the cemetery board encourages folks to check with their insurance company. So I could have my homeowner's insurance... I cover the cost to repair this monument? If, it's, if it is covered and if it's a family monument. Okay. How do so I, that you'd have to check with your broker yeah, to find you, out whether or not. Then you've done insurance. No, no. <laughs> but you, but you <laughs> know, the, the, I mean, you, I don't know if you've ever buried someone. I mean, buried, you uh, know, yes. a family member. So, yes. I mean, you may know this stuff just instinctively as opposed to policy and it being depends. official. It just, so, it just depends you know. on the policy. I, okay. I don't think I have one that actually covers well, it. And just to add on that, that's really what our association is about is assisting individuals and especially cemeteries if there's anyone out there just that a member uh, to join and, and we're always a resource. You have to join though, get assistance. Uh, we, we help anyone, anyone. no matter what, okay. but it, it would be really uh, useful to them if they did join our association. David, Legislative Council, um, and some of our members write articles for our newsletters which we distribute yearly. Uh, well, I, I went online, it's not that expensive to join. No, it's no, not. It's it's, it's very affordable. You could be forty dollars. Is that what I read? Uh, there... As low as twelve dollars. As low as twelve. Fifty interments per year. Okay, I just want to... now. What about above ground burials? Because I went to a cemetery. I, it sounds like I'm going to all these cemeteries. <laughs> but it's like I went to a cemetery in New Jersey, and uh, they had this latest thing is above ground burials. It's a Jewish cemetery. Any, you know, is any thoughts on that? Is that happening more and more here in New York State, or? Are we running out of ground to bury people under? <laughs> well, it's certainly, in, for cemeteries, um, it's a good op option in an area where the ground is not suitable for in-ground burial. Okay. But it it's really goes with whatever the particular um, group that folks are, are catering to as far as who they bury in their cemetery as to whether or not that's acceptable to them. And obviously within the Jewish faith, there's, there's a, you know, there are, differing opinions on what types of burials are appropriate. And, uh, you know, I think in New Jersey's a little different than New York, but certainly we have a whole wide range of options in New York. And uh, what's the difference between an above ground burial and a mausoleum? There isn't really a difference. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so it'd be like a mausoleum, okay. Mm -hmm. so is it less money, would you say? I mean, why would a person want it? Usually is I mean, more money. 
Real one? To do above ground burial. Even though you don't have to dig. Okay. Well, there's a structure, so. And okay. then the structure's gotta be maintained and you need to be able to, um, but the body trust. But the body decomposes the same way? I mean, is in a I don't think you want me to go into the detail, <laughs> but, but it, it is, we, uh, we, yes, it, it is, know? it is pretty much the same way. Okay, now Rabbi Simon, do you, is there, a, are you not allowed to have an above ground? Because well, there's something yeah. about the body being part of the soil and part of the ground, like returning? Well, this really, let's just go from the beginning. The real source is that Adam was created from dirt. Adam's name in Hebrew is Adam. Ground is Adama. So they say you're made from dirt. Man's made out of dirt. And um, you go back to the dirt. So that's why I think that's why I'm saying cremation wouldn't be allowed under Orthodox Torah law. And again, above ground, you're not going into the dirt. So, so that the, idea of, and that's why also instead of metal, Metal is not going to decompose for right. not, and if ever, if, obviously a long time. And like you were saying, a pine box, you know, even a, obviously. So according to Orthodox water. Jewish law, above ground burials are verboten. Right, it should be down yeah. underneath. Okay, the there ground. it is, officially from the rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, but he says there's a lot of things that, you know, obviously other Jewish organizations do, but. Right. Well, doesn't mean doesn't you know, well, the Reform have yeah. the above-ground burials. I don't know about conservative if they're, but, you know, it's, some, it's a personal choice, I think, at some point. Right. You get two Jews, you get three opinions, yeah. you know. So, you know <laughs> we get one burial, though. That's right. One burial. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about uh, salvaging cemeteries. Do you, is there any way, I mean, I, there's this gentleman locally, Mike, Dr. Michael Lozman. You know him at all? No. He is going around Eastern Europe. Uh, and Belarus and Lithuania, and he's restoring cemeteries that were lost to the Holocaust. And the fences are, are down, you can't even tell that it was a cemetery, the stones have been turned over, and he's, he actually takes students on trips to Eastern Europe to, uh, and, and to learn firsthand about the Holocaust and, and to restore these cemeteries. He's restored about 13 of them already. Mm. Uh, at his own expense, volunteer, no one's, you know, it's not a profit-making thing. Is there anything that you could do, to, or do you have any thoughts about this? That you know, Get volunteers to look, hey, here's a cemetery Or you have any thoughts about maybe, you know, doing something where, that can assist him, or have a, you know, can the Cemetery Association help in some way? Well, I know, you know, locally in New York, certainly there are ways, there's actually a law that allows the State Division of Cemeteries to assist groups to restore cemeteries. But in another country? Uh, not in another country, That's in the state of New York. So the, if the question is for, right. other, for other countries, right. um, no, but there are plenty of organizations that might be interested in helping. Okay, then maybe you can help him. Sure, actually. you should okay. absolutely have him reach out to us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any thoughts about uh, restoring cemeteries and is that uh, in terms of being, I mean, because he's saying when a stone falls over, and actually the writing falls on the ground. Yeah. When you upright it, it's actually more pristine. That's true. Than if yeah. it was weathered and open to the weather. That's true. We're that. actually doing a cemetery restoration class for municipalities uh, <clears throat> in June at the, the Great Sagamore Resort, um, one of the Vanderbilt old great camps in the Adirondacks. And uh, we did it last year, calling in folks from all over, giving them the techniques on how to restore themselves with volunteer labor, how to restore gravestones, and how to restore cemeteries. And that's when? That's in uh, June, I believe June 3rd. It's uh, Great Camp Sagamore is the website, greatcampsagamore.org. Dot org, okay. And where is the, um, and have you undertaken any restorations or have you? Yes. What, tell us about that. So we're doing, uh, we actually do a veterans monument restoration program in Rensselaer County, and we're, I'm actually taking some students this weekend. We're actually doing uh, some, some stones this weekend, getting okay. their volunteer hours in. Well, the, the Dr. Lozman says the most important thing is putting a uh, fence around cemeteries. Yeah. Yes. Is that true for non-Jewish cemeteries also? Absolutely. The law, law re allows right. you to apply it, apply for it, and if you're operating a cemetery, you're required to put a fence up. Yeah, because that's what really makes it a boundary, mm -hmm. you know, yes. that's what, yeah. Anything else that you want to add that we didn't get a chance to talk about? Anything about the association? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just that uh, a lot of people don't realize the importance of a cemetery to a community until usually they lose a loved one um, or pass by it. 
Uh, they're very beautiful uh, and uh, they should be maintained and they're an important part of the community. Uh, and that's what we encourage and we are a resource to an everyday citizen or any cemeteries that may not know about the New York State Association of Cemeteries. Um, and we're always there as a resource in any way possible. Um, and you can go right on our website, it's www.nysac.com. Nice sack. Yep. Well, you get it confused with the Association of Counties, I'm sure. We have before. Yeah. But that's the boost traffic, which they, is good. They're, <laughs> they're nice enough to forward the mail over to us. <laughs> they're yeah. .org and you're .com. Yes. yes. So you got to it first, we got, I guess. We got there first. We yes. got there first. <laughs> okay. Well, well we're thank out of you. Town, uh, time in that, Dave and Don, that it's very uh, important. Like I said, in Judaism, it's uh, maybe a little bit people don't say, oh, death and cemeteries and funerals. Oh, I don't want to deal with it, but again, in Judaism, of course, it's Hate to very, say, very... Uh, it's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so. In any case, you're doing good work and yes. helping out, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all part of uh, a human being, you know, it's like you said, life and death is part of it, and giving the high standards of what a human being really is, even after they passed away. So thank you very much for thank your you. work. Thank you. Yes, thank thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.